All right. Let's start with a story about little Johnny, right? It's been a while since Sunday morning we've heard from little Johnny. Little Johnny's at church one Sunday with his parents, and he's sitting there, and that preacher there is going on and on, as they sometimes do. And little Johnny is just getting bored and bored and more bored. And so his mother finally pulls out of her purse a notepad and a pencil. And she says, little Johnny, to keep you entertained, why don't you mark down on this paper how many times the preacher says and? And Johnny's like, okay. And this keeps him occupied for a while. But even then, sometimes, you know, he starts getting bored. And he's bored. His father finally sees this. And he's like, he leans down and he whispers to little Johnny. He's like, little Johnny is... Are you okay? Or are there some other words you'd like to listen for? And little Johnny's like, yes. I'd like to listen for the words, let us pray. <laughs> so little Johnny knows, let us pray comes at the end of the sermon, right? Uh, he's impatient, it seems, for the sermon to uh, arrive at its ending. And guess what? He's just like some of you sometimes. Yes, I see it all and I know all. Impatient for the sermon to come to an end. But impatience, we all suffer impatience, Right? Uh, I, I mean, just in our everyday lives, we want to experience like the good stuff, right? So we want to kind of skip over kind of the mundane, ordinary things and just get to the good stuff, right? That's where we want to go. Kind of like when, when you leave on vacation, you're all excited and you get in your car and then you realize, well, I have to drive for hours or I have to go to the airport and, and for hours and... And you just want to get there, right? You just want to get to the destination. Because we're impatient. I found a story about a man being impatient online this week. I think a lot of us will identify with it. And I'm just going to read you what he wrote. He says, I was at the grocery store with a sandwich and a pint of milk in my hands. So two small items. Barely on time to pick up my daughter from school. And I had picked the wrong line. The clerk in my line had abandoned it to talk with her manager, and I watched as a man got in the other line, moved steadily forward, checked out, and left with his groceries while I stood still. I was becoming impatient. I considered switching lines, but the other line had grown longer than when I had arrived, so I left. I walked to the front of my line, plopped down my sandwich and milk, and walked out of the store. I got in my car and drove to another grocery store about a mile down the road and bought lunch there. Anyone here ever felt like that? Anyone here ever done this? But he goes on. He says, my decision was irrational. It almost certainly took longer uh, for me to drive to the second store and get lunch than it would have taken to get through that line at the first store. My impatience cost me and my daughter as I was five minutes late picking her up. Grocery store lines. Is there any greater test of patience than grocery store lines? And if you're like me, and apparently like this guy in the story, you always pick the wrong line, right? I don't know how it is, but it seems like everyone who goes to the grocery store somehow always picks the wrong line. It's, it's, it's impossible, but that's, that's the truth of it, right? But you know what happens to all of us? We, and we get impatient because we all suffer from impatience. Wanting to just skip ahead to the better part, Right? It's like watching your favorite movie. You, you, who here has a favorite movie you've seen over and over and over and over again? Yeah, but you still watch Pretty Woman? Yeah, yeah I, I just, we all have these movies. And sometimes you, you put them in, you're like, yeah, I want to see this. And you start watching the beginning and you see the setup. And you're like, okay. But then it starts to get into all that middle stuff where things are just like dragging on or just aren't going good. And you're like, I just want to skip to the end where everyone's happy. Everything's worked out, right? It's kind of like that. Because we're impatient. And for the most part, this impatience, it's not too big a deal, right? I mean, it might, might cost us some quality of life, you know, being stressed or angry in places where we don't need to be because we're impatient. But uh, other than that, it's, it's not a big deal. But even though it might not be a big deal, I tell you, we need to be wary of impatience. And I'll tell you why. Because our impatience is one of the things the devil will use to tempt us away from worshiping and serving God. I'm going to say that again because it's like the main point of the sermon today. Our impatience is one of the things the devil is going to use to tempt us away from serving and worshiping God. It's true, and we know this because it's his age-old tactic. He's done this forever. It's one of the tactics the devil tried to use against Jesus. The devil's trying to get Jesus to sin, trying to get Jesus to mess up, and the devil tries this. Now, Jesus resisted the temptation because he's ready for it. And the question is, are we? Are we? Let's take a look 
at this interaction the devil had with Jesus when he was trying to use impatience to tempt Jesus into sin. And Sandy, go ahead and put us up. This is just setting the scene. You'll recognize uh, this verse from last week, from Luke chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. So Jesus follows the Holy Spirit of God. He, he's following after God. He's obeying God. And he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, for 40 days of spiritual renewal. But during these 40 days, the devil also comes and makes this, this pressing attempt to get Jesus to sin, to get him to mess up, to get him to rebel against God. And he just throws temptation after temptation after temptation at Jesus. And Sandy, you want to show us at chapter 4, verse 5, this is one of the temptations he throws at Jesus. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. So what do we got going on here? Through, through some sort of vision or something, somehow, the devil shows Jesus all the kingdoms, all the nations, all the people groups in the world. And he says, look, look, look at the splendor, and look how, how much power you would have, how much authority you would have if you could rule over all that. And the devil says, it's mine, it's been given to me, and that's a lie. It wasn't given to him. He stole it. He took it from God. And God allow, allow, allows him to take it until such time as God's going to deal with the devil, and which is one of the reasons Jesus is on earth, to deal with the devil, to deal with this. It's one of the reasons the devil wants Jesus to mess up. You know, so he doesn't lose his authority. But the devil lies and he says, hey, it's all mine. It's been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. And he says, I'll give it to you. You can rule on high over everything in the world. You can rule on high. And you know what this reminds me of when I hear this, this, this idea here? It reminds me of Walt Disney's Aladdin. Anyone here ever see this movie? Oh yeah, I love it. There's a point at the end where, where Jafar gets hold of the magic lamp, and so he's in control of the genie. And he asks the genie, he says, Genie, make me into the sultan who rules on high and show us here, Sandy. There we go, there he is, Jafar is sultan. And the genie picks up the palace and he puts it high up on a mountain and says, Jafar, you're ruling over everything on high. And this is kind of the, the idea that the devil is putting to Jesus right now. And he says, you can rule over everything if, if, there's always an if with the devil. You don't get anything from the devil for free. It's not like when we go to Jesus for mercy or grace and it's free for the taking. No, with the devil, there's always a cost. There's always a catch. There's always a price that has to be paid. And so, Sandy, show us, this is what the devil says. If you worship me, it will all be yours. If you bow to me, if you submit yourself to me, I'll give it to you. But you got to worship me, not God, me. Now, let's step back here and really kind of take a look at at what sin the devil is trying to tempt Jesus to commit. Because it can get a little bit muddy here. The sin is not Jesus ruling the earth. That's, that wouldn't be a sin, because that's actually what Jesus was destined for. It's what he does now, right? I mean, he's the king of kings. You might recall in Matthew 28, verse 18, when, when Jesus, after his death and after his resurrection, he comes to his followers and he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority on earth, it's mine. So it's Jesus' destiny to rule all over, over all the earth. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, because what comes with Jesus' ultimate final reign on earth? Peace. The end of all suffering. And so that's a good thing. So that's, that, that's Jesus ruling. That's not sinful. The sin here would be for Jesus to worship the devil, to submit and bow down to the devil. Because Jesus himself has said, you cannot serve two masters. Jesus can't serve the devil and God at the same time. And so for him to, to bow before the devil would be him abandoning God, uh, just rebelling against God, which is really what sin is all about. This is the sin the devil wants Jesus to commit. All right, so great. We understand that, Pastor. But what does it have to do with us being impatient? Maybe you're impatient to hear that answer. I don't know. Well, the devil is actually preying on impatience here. Because Jesus isn't just going to go and walk away from God to go worship the devil, is he? No, no one does this. No, no, one, no one signs up for Team Devil uh, unless there's a compelling reason. 
And the devil is trying to get Jesus to see a reason out of his impatience. The devil says, you can rule now if you worship me. Look at all the good you can do, Jesus, when, when you were ruler. Now, certainly, Jesus, you, you are destined to rule by God's plan someday, eventually. But how many people will suffer and die or whatever in the meantime? And you can start ruling now and caring for people now and doing good now if you worship me. You see what the devil's doing? He's praying on impatience. He's offering Jesus a bypass and he's hoping that impatience will lead Jesus to take it. Bypass. What do I mean by bypass? Well, let me tell you. You, you, know, you know what tests my patience? You know what makes me impatient? Getting to Route 8 South from here. Because to do that, I have to go through downtown Butler. Right? There's, and, and I've got no reason to be in downtown Butler. But I, I've got to go through it. But you can't just go through it because you go in and you can't get out. You're just there forever, right? And you're just sitting there forever. You can't get out quickly because you come to all these stoplights, right? And I swear every single one of them is always red. Forever. I mean, I'll be sitting at these things. They are forever. And you're sitting there and you're watching the cross traffic who has the green light, but there's no cross traffic there. And you're just sitting there and no one's coming. And you're sitting there and no one's coming. And you're sitting there and sitting there. By the time it turns green, I am just inwardly fuming because this adds like 10 or 15 minutes to my trip just to be in downtown Butler someplace I don't want to be but I have to be and I'm stuck there and all I want is a bypass a road that skirts around downtown Butler that will take me right to Route 8 and get me to where I want to be wouldn't it be wonderful I just want to skip all that other stuff anyone here with me oh yeah you know it Mark you need to work <laughs> oh, I have. Uh, I want to bypass the skip the unpleasant stuff and get me to where I want to be, where I'm going, right? That's impatience. And, and, and that's how the devil was using impatience to tempt Jesus here. It's like saying, Jesus, all you have to do is worship me and bypass all this stuff in between to get you to where you want to be, to get you to, to rule over the people kindly and with love. Worship me, Jesus. That's the bypass. Let's think, what would Jesus be impatient to maybe bypass? Because it's not just the extra long red lights he'd be bypassing. It's something much more important to him and to us. He would be bypassing suffering. You know, all that stuff about being whipped, beaten, mocked, abandoned by his friends. We talked about it uh, this past Wednesday at our, our Lent gathering, uh, which was a blessing. Uh, he, he can avoid all that. Oh, oh and that stuff, that, that, that stuff about the cross, dying, uh, an agonizing torture beyond imagination. You can skip that, Jesus. You know, which, out, which we're stuck in hell forever, but hey, you, you could skip it. Waiting on God and God's timing means Jesus has to go through all of that. But worshiping the devil gives Jesus the opportunity to bypass all the suffering. Just bowing to the devil, just submitting to the devil. Why not? Who here would not be impatient to bypass that sort of pain and suffering? Who here, in the face of all that, wouldn't be tempted to go off God's plan, to go off God's timing, and just get to the good place without it? Right? Who here wouldn't be tempted to trade, trade loyalty to God for the devil? Because it's impatience. And in our patience, we give in to this temptation all the time. We denounce our loyalty to God because we are impatient. We do it. The devil tells us, it's not going your way right now. It's, it's not, you're not getting what you want. It's, it's not working out the way you wanted. And it's going to be a while. So, just skip it all. Forget about doing it God's way or waiting for God or, or doing it with an attitude God wants you to have. Do it your own way. Just, just follow me. That's what the devil whispers to us. And we denounce our loyalty to God by doing things our way in our own time instead of waiting or going through whatever process God wants to take us through. We denounce our loyalty to God by becoming angry and blaming God, don't we? Hey, uh, things don't work out the way I want them to when I want to, so I'm going to be angry and impatient. And the devil uses that. He says, then just forget God and His way and come my way. Just follow me. And you can have it your way now. 
There are lots of things we want right now, right? But God says, wait. And that's impatience. And the devil will use that impatience to tempt us away from God. I mean, maybe it's a big house or a, a nicer car or whatever. And we get into debt we can't afford because we want those things. We're impatient. A lot of people are, are impatient for, for sexual activity uh, before marriage or outside of marriage. Or maybe we want a promotion at work or something and we don't get it. And so we just get angry and bitter because, hey, it didn't happen our way in my time. Or, or, or maybe we are impatient for recognition from family, uh, which will never come. Or maybe we're impatient, you know, some of you, for, for retirement. And you're just looking, I want to retire, but hey, may, maybe the finances don't, don't line up, but I'm going to do it anyway, right? I'm not going to wait. We're, we get impatient. When we get impatient, will we worship God and wait? That's the question. Or will we allow our impatience to drive us to denounce in God's way and God's time for things? Or will we uh, worship God and wait and go through the path that he wants to take us that might contain some trials or even suffering? See, giving into this temptation, is G if Jesus had done this, he would have gotten himself a short-term gain. He would be ruling immediately. But it would come with long-term cost, the loss of our very souls. You see how important it is to resist temptation, ladies and gentlemen. In the same way, when we give into this temptation, we get a short-term boost, and we forfeit something much greater. Because God's doing something much greater. He's not just saying, wait, he says, I'm doing something with this time. And Sandy showed us from Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. This is uh, Isaiah declaring words for God. He says, see, I have refined you, though not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. You see, being patient and waiting on God's timing is a process in us. In that time, he's refining us as silver is refined. You know, in the biblical days, they didn't just go on the street and, oh, there was silver. But silver what was uh, mined in the mines, uh, but it still wasn't just pure silver. It was like this ore, this, this rock stuff that uh, was mixed with all sorts of other metals. It was silver mixed with a whole bunch of other stuff. So, to get the pure silver, the ore was put through a process of extreme heating, a heat-suffering process to draw the silver out from the other metals. The pressure of the heat refined the silver. You couldn't get around this process if you wanted the pure silver. You couldn't avoid this suffering of the metal if you wanted the good stuff. See, doing things God's way and in His time, waiting and being patient may seem like suffering. But be certain, in that time, God is working in us and He's working on us. He's refining us for His purposes and His righteousness. And if we bypass that time and experience, and maybe even suffering, then we're missing out. What are we missing out on? We're missing out. We never become the complete, fulfilled servant of God that Jesus died to make us. We miss out on the joy of being brought closer to God as we depend on Him to get through this experience, through this time, maybe even through suffering. And so therefore, we just feel like we're just out there doing everything alone. We miss out on being built into the refined, beautiful instruments of God's mercy and love. And instead, we remain tarnished, blunt, and dull. Kind of like an old penny. Do you ever have like one of those old pennies that was like, it's like tarnished and greenish and it's like dirty and you're like, yuck. But then you get a brand new one that's right out of the mint. And what is it? It's shiny. And that's the penny you want, right? They're both worth a cent. But which one do you want? You know, you go and pay with a penny that's like greenish. And stuff, you're, like, you're saying like you did something to it. Like, right? But you, you want that shiny penny. And that's, we're like those old pennies though. If, if, if we try to bypass the path God wants to take us down because of impatience. And Jesus saw through that. The devil comes at him with this temptation. And Sandy, show us Jesus' response. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So Jesus is ready for this one. He doesn't let impatience get him ahead of God. He says, devil, I don't worship you. I don't worship myself. I don't worship my impatience. I don't worship anything that you could promise me. I worship God and God alone. I'm not going off his time. And Jesus resists the temptation. And so what we learn uh, from Jesus about resisting temptation is we need to ask ourselves this question. Am I satisfied with God or am I becoming impatient? 
right? That's what it all comes down to, being satisfied with God. Uh, Am I convinced that God's grace is sufficient? God's grace is enough for me. And in finding fulfillment in God's presence rather than our own ideas about how things should be and when they should be. Where in your life are you impatient? Maybe even impatient in a way that is leading to dissatisfaction. Because that's where the devil is going to come after you. It might be in a relationship, friend, family, wife, husband, son, daughter, brother, sister, parent. It might be in an employment situation or, or an issue that's going on at work. Or it might be an issue at home with, with your greater family. And it might be a situation you're in because there are forces outside working on you and pressing in on you and you have no control over them. Think about your life and answer the question here today. Where are you dispatient or impatient or dissatisfied? Because that very place is where the devil is going to enter into your life and tempt you away from God. He's going to come in and say, forget God's way and God's timing. Do it my way. And so often, when we're not checking ourselves ahead of time, this is when Satan comes in, offers the temptation, and we take it. And sin enters. So I want you to stop and think about your life today. Where are you impatient? What situation in life are you eager just to get through or to or beyond? Think about it specifically. Name it. In your mind, name it. You've got space in your bullet and say you might even sit here now and write a list. These are places where you are prone to the devil's temptation to take you away from God. Now think about them and bring them before God. Lift them up as an offering to Him today. And and follow Jesus' example and declare, Hey, I don't worship these things or these these impatient... In that place, I worship and serve God alone. You know, by way of application today, I, I want you to pray with me here at the end of the sermon. And you're like, there's nothing new about that. No, but uh, by way of application, I want us to take time to prepare for that prayer. So if you could all just bow your heads with me, please. And I want you to think about your own life. Where are the places you are impatient Where are the places of impatience the devil is going to try to come in and tempt you to do things your way and your time and you're just trying to bypass? Maybe he's trying to tempt you away from God's plan. Or maybe because it's not working out the way you envisioned in in the time you envisioned, he's trying to tempt you away from living a godly lifestyle. Or having a godly attitude. And pray with me. Dear God, we pause for a moment to reflect on our lives and bring before you the specific places and ways we are impatient in our lives, places where perhaps we are impatient with you. God, I am impatient here with this. But I serve and worship you only. I don't worship myself. I don't worship my own timetable. I don't worship my own agenda. I don't worship my own idea about how things should be now. I worship only you. God, these places where I'm impatient, I decide now I'm not going around them. I decide to go through them with you that you might refine me as silver into the more complete follower of Jesus Christ who you have already proclaimed me to be. Help me, God, as I look forward to the great places you will bring me to be patient and to worship and serve you and you alone. In the name of Christ our Savior, I pray. Amen.